Okay, hi everyone. So welcome to the Fundamentals of Physiology, otherwise known as PM1A. So I just wanted to briefly introduce myself before we go any further. So my name is Dr. Leanne Black and I'm the PM1A module convener. So I'm a lecturer in pharmacology here at Reading in the School of Pharmacy. I'm also a registered pharmacist and I've got experience in community hospital and prison pharmacy as well. So if you want to contact me at all during the year, my email address is l.ee.j.black at redin.ac.uk. My office is in the Hopkins building, so that's room 204. I my office hours vary, so if you want to meet him, just pop me an email and we can arrange something face to face or online if that's easier over Teams. So I'm just going to switch my camera off so you can focus on the slideshow. Okay, thank you. So last week you may have received a few emails from the university. And I know it seems like a lot, but a few of the emails are actually really useful. So in particular, you'll have received one email referring to the Study Smart programme offered by the university. And this is a free brief online course for all new undergraduate students, including foundation students. And I really, really recommend you engage with this programme. It's really useful since it's going to prepare you to study at the university level. So there are many, many differences between learning at school and learning at university. And the key point is that learning at university is independent. So within this programme, you will learn a bit about academic integrity, communication skills at the university level, and also, as I mentioned, independent learning. And it will also include the blended learning approach that we will be following this term, as well as the new tools and technologies you will need to use. You can access these resources throughout your whole course, but I recommend you have a look as soon as you can at this Study Smart course. So in addition to the Study Smart email, you will have also received an email about the Back to Uni course, which looks rather focused on students returning to university. But you, you guys should still have a look at this as it contains really useful information. So the email contains a few links and also a lot of information about approaches for flexible and blended learning. So this term, as you know, the university is continuing to be affected by the current and ongoing COVID pandemic. So we do need to adapt our learning style. So you get a lot of guidelines on the digital tools you'll be using. And also the email contains information about strategies to manage your time in an efficient and effective way. So please do have a look at this. So these emails that I've mentioned are very, very useful and they will serve you well throughout the academic year. Great, so now I'm going to talk to you a bit about PM1A. And there's actually a lot of information on Blackboard already. And I'm going to guide you through the Blackboard page for PM1A later on. But the first and most important bit I want you to keep in mind is that at the start of the week, you need to check your timetable. And I'm talking about the central timetable that you should be able to access using your mobile devices, your PCs or tablets. Within the module, there'll be plenty of online lecture videos. So these are pre-recorded videos, as well as live online teaching sessions, as well as traditional face-to-face -face practicals and workshops on campus. So it's really important to engage with all of these activities and there will be a significant amount of independent learning involved and therefore it's important to organise your time accordingly. And you can find an outline of these lectures, practicals and workshops in, that you have every week in the weekly learning plan. And I'll talk a bit more about the weekly learning plan later on. So for face to face sessions on campus, it's really important you familiarise yourself with the university guidelines regarding COVID and general behaviour and health and safety. 
And for all sessions on campus, we do highly encourage you to wear masks to protect yourselves and others. And for the face to face sessions, it's really important that you only attend the sessions you have been allocated to. So the staff teaching on the module aren't allowed to give you access to sessions that you've not been timed to before. So do make sure that you pay attention to the timetable and also your group allocation. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about assessments next. So in the module, we do have a number of assessments and some of these are called formative assessments. So what do we mean by formative assessments? So these, are, these formative assessments don't contribute to the module mark. However, they're very, very useful in terms of enhancing your learning, your learning experience, and also to improve your understanding. And the types of formative assessments you're going to be given are multiple choice questions that will be released on the Blackboard portal. And you'll also have different formative assessments online, such as Turnitin coursework and so on. So do pay attention to these as well, because they're very useful, even though they're not contributing to your mark. And just to mention feedback, it's really, really important, not just for this module, but for all modules within the MFARM course, that you recognise and take on board feedback. So please make sure you use the feedback you're given to improve your performance. In general, the university guideline is that feedback on your submitted piece of work or your performance in practical classes will be delivered within 15 days, 15 working days after submission of the piece of work. And feedback can be, take a number of different forms. So it could be general feedback, individual, or you can get group feedback. The feedback can be written or oral, or it can be in class or online feedback. So there are lots of different types of feedback and make sure you make use of all of these. So in addition to the formative assessments, obviously we do have summer, summative assessments. And these summative assessments are those which do contribute to your final mark. Okay, so these do contribute to your final mark. So when you're preparing for these, it's really important that you keep calm, engage with all of the material we're providing you with, revise and be as proactive as you can. And as, as we'll talk about later on during the session, we do have plenty of tools to allow you to communicate with teaching staff on the module. So do make use of these and ask your questions if you're stuck on anything. And remember, there are absolutely no stupid questions. So what summative assessments will you have for PM1A? So first of all, we have the end of year written exam. And this is the most important piece of assess work in the module. The exam will take place in the summer term and it contributes 70% to your final module mark. So that's 70, 70% to the final module mark. So this is the key element of the assessment. Then, in addition to this exam, we'll also assess your practical skills that you've learnt through the module. And we'll have one practical skill exam, which is worth 10% of your final mark. And this will take place at the beginning of the spring term. And then there will also be an assessment of the skills and knowledge from the practicals that, take place in the, that takes place in the spring term. And this exam is going to be at the end of spring term, and this assessment is worth 20% of your final mark. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about who to contact if you've got a query about the module. So if you've got questions on a specific topic related to a lecture, then please first contact the member of staff that delivered the session on that specific topic. So for example, if Dr. Widra delivers a very interesting genetic lecture and you want to know more about it, you've got some questions, please do contact him. And this applies to all the staff that are delivering lectures. If you have, on the other hand, a question about a workshop or a practical class, please first contact the session leader. Or if you've got a more general question about the module, more generally related to teaching matters, then please contact me as the module convener on the email address shown on the slide. And if I'm not available, then do contact the year one tutor 
who's Dr. John Brazier. Okay, so I think you've already met him in the in the welcome week. Okay, so after all this general general information I've given you, I suggest you have a good look at Blackboard. So Blackboard is a very powerful online learning tool. You're going to be using this daily with all your modules throughout the ac academic year. So you log in with the same details you use to access other university systems, such as your email. OK, so this is the initial page you get before you log in. Then when you're logged in, you need to select courses on the left hand side and the module that you're looking at, which is in this case, Fundamentals of Physiology. So once you're in the, into the module page, you can see there's a panel on the left hand side, a black panel with different links. So you can see there I've highlighted the model, module information link. So clicking on this gives you the module information page. So once you're in the module information page, then you can click on the timetable file that I've uploaded for you guys. But keep in mind that this timetable is just an overview of the sessions that are, that are taking place in a particular week. So you'll see a list of all the lect lectures that you'll have to listen to and it'll tell you what practical classes and workshops you have to attend in the week. If the teaching session is online, then this will be stated on the left hand side of the timetable as, as highlighted on the slide. So all lectures will be in the form of an online pre-recorded video. We also call these screencasts. So you can view these in your own time. But again, I need to stress how important it is to organize your time well, to make sure you cover all the learning material for that week. And in terms of live teaching sessions, as we said previously, it's important to check your centralized timetable for the most up-to-date information on day, time and location of the sessions. So we've mentioned the timetable, but also on this module information page, you can have a look at the module description. And in the module description, you can see what learning outcomes we designed for, the, for, the, for this particular module. And you can also see the general PM1A module roadmap, which tells you more about PM1A. In addition, on this module information page, you can see the list of staff members delivering teaching on the module and find all their contact information. OK, so if you want to contact an individual staff member, this is a good place to start. OK, great. So in addition to the general module information, you will also find on this left hand side panel a button called Microsoft Stream, which I've highlighted on the slide here. So Microsoft Stream is a tool that's similar to YouTube. So you're probably familiar with the structure instantly because it because it is very it works very much like YouTube. So all the videos for the module will be uploaded on Microsoft Stream and you can navigate it as, as you do on YouTube. So it should be really straightforward and easy for you to use. So what we're going to use to communicate with you guys, especially when it comes to asking questions, is an online platform called Padlet, which is extremely straightforward to use. So I've highlighted the, the link on the slide here. If you can see exam preparation sessions Padlet. OK, so please click on this and have a look at it and have a look at the instructions there. So this platform we're going to use for all of the exam preparation sessions and all of the tutorials that we're going to be delivering over the term. So if you would like to ask a question dedicated to the content of a particular lecture, please use the Padlet. So you click on the Padlet, post your question. You don't have to put your name down. OK, this can be done anonymously. So it's really, really a good tool to use to communicate with us. And asking questions is really, really important because you're going to be assessed on the content of all the module of all the lectures. So do make the most of this opportunity.
So in addition to this general exam preparation session Padlet, we do have a Padlet for all the people who don't have A-level biology. And this is going to be a very, very useful tool to support you guys. OK, we know biology, physiology can be challenging and can be quite confusing, especially if you don't have the background knowledge and you need to catch up a bit. And so we're going to have dedicated tutorials for people who didn't do A-level biology. OK, so dedicated support sessions that will take place. And this Padlet that I've highlighted here on the slide, this Padlet is dedicated to those sessions. So if you've got any questions you would like explained in a less advanced way, a bit more simplified, this is the tool you have to use. So another important link on the left hand side panel of this Blackboard page is the folder containing all of the lecture, tutorial and exam preparation materials in the week to come. So if you click on the link for lectures, tutorials and exam preparation sessions, this will take you to a sub page with several folders which are labelled per week. And you can see for this week, week one, there's a dedicated folder. And you can also see there's a learning plan for this coming week. So if you click on this week one folder, then you will find folders containing materials for the lectures for that week. OK, so you can see for this week, you've got genetic lectures to listen to by Dr. Widra, as well as cell biology lectures by Dr. Widra. So if you click on those lecture folders, this will open, open all the videos, the lecture videos that you need to watch. And the folds will also contain any additional information, any additional reading, for example, that you will need to, success, to successfully engage with these lectures. So in addition to the lecture folder, you'll also find another folder on the left hand side menu called Practicals and Workshops 2021 to 22. So as the name already suggests, this is the folder to go to to look for materials for the practical sessions. So as you know from the announcement, the first practical session in the module is coming up this week. This is the Essential Laboratory Skills session developed by Dr. Cottrell. So you can find all the information and all the links to this session within this practical practicals and workshop folder, as you could see on the slide here. OK, so good. So later on in the academic year, you'll also find links to the multiple choice questions, which, if you remember, is one of the types of formative assessment I mentioned before. And you can access these questions via the assessment link shown on the left hand side panel. OK, and I'll remind you when these MCQs are being released. OK, so they're not there at the moment. And then if you're interested in the types of questions that you could be asked in the exams, which I'm sure you all are, there is a, a link to past exam papers and also feedback on previous exams. OK, so this is also on the left hand side panel. And this is very useful for you guys to give you an idea of what to expect in the exams. OK, so my final note about the Blackboard page is the the announcements um, part, which is again is on the left hand side panel. OK, so I know you've probably seen a few announcements already. OK, so I've made I did a welcome announcement. There was an announcement about pre-reading for the practical session and I announced that the weekly learning plan was available. So do make sure you read all of the announcements because they'll all have important information in them. They may be from me or maybe from another staff member on the module. OK, you should also be getting email alerts as well telling you to check the announcements on Blackboard. OK, so make sure you're keeping on top of that as well as your emails. OK, so we've, we've looked at all the Blackboard information. Now let's look at what content there is in the, mo in the module. So what is physiology? 
If we look the term up online, we can find quite a few different definitions. But the first one that pops up is that physiology is a branch of biology dealing with the functions and activities of living organisms and their parts, including all physical and chemical processes. Then we have the second definition, and this is that physiology is the organic processes or functions in any organism or in any of its parts. So what is the content of PM1A and how does it relate to the definition I gave you before? So if you look quickly at this word cloud generated with the description for the module, then you'll see that the module description is talking about anatomy, systems, tissues, organs and body. So this is a quite high level of complexity, but how do these complex systems actually work? So you'll also see that within PM1A, we will be talking about signaling, we'll be talking about cells, signals and mechanisms. And finally, we'll learn how these complex systems, including tissues and organs, interact with the environment. So how they're influenced by certain molecules, by oxygen, water and so on. So we'll start really at the bottom of things. We'll have a quick look at the genetic code. We'll have a look at the basic molecules of hereditary. So DNA, RNA, and how the information stored in these molecules is, trans is transcribed and translated into proteins, which are our molecules of life. Within cell biology, we will learn about macromolecules and about certain parts of the cells and cell organelles. And we'll also learn how these systems use information provided by the DNA. So this is sort of spiral learning. We're starting at the very beginning, but every single lecture you will hear will also feed back to things you've already learnt. So for this reason, it's really, really important that you watch all of the videos we provide you with because they're all linked. And sometimes it might actually be a good idea to re-watch a video or two, not just doing revision, but for example, if you struggle with the content of a certain lecture that is referring to something you've learned previously. OK, so you might want to look back at that previous lecture. In addition to cell biology, genetics and biochemistry, you'll also learn about microbiology. So you'll learn a lot about viruses, bacteria and parasites. And this is really, really important, as, as we've seen with this current epidemic. So as a pharmacist, you'll need to be familiar with basics of microbiology. You'll need to understand how viruses and bacteria work. And also you need to know about vaccination, which, as we know from the news, is very important these days, not just for pharmacists, but for the whole society. And after microbiology, you'll then move on to more complex topics, including physiology and anatomy. So you'll be learning how the human body looks in terms of anatomy, you learn about different body systems, such as the cardiovascular system, the digestive system, the blood, and you'll also learn about the nervous system, the muscle system, and so on. And this is the most complex level of knowledge you'll be facing this year. So why is all this important for you to know as a future pharmacist? You might think this is too complex. You might think, I don't need it. It's not relevant to me. I only need to understand the chemistry of drugs, but this isn't true for many reasons. So the first reason is because you need to understand how cells, tissues and organs work and function together in order to have the essential knowledge to understand and learn therapeutics and pharmaceutics. So you don't need to just know how a drug synthesized, delivered and applied. You need to know how it actually functions. So how it interacts with tissues and organs. And this is especially important for you to be able to predict side effects of the drugs you might prescribe in future. You also need fundamental knowledge to understand how systems within the body work and how they function together to, to be able to understand disease and their management, disease and their management. And you also need to be able to develop the ability to evaluate scientific evidence and to formulate appropriate conclusions, as well as self-learning skills. 
and this is very important as a professional pharmacist. So I think this is all we needed to cover in, in the introduction and I look forward to seeing you soon for your first practical next week. So thank you very much for your attention and see you all soon.